Uh, this is a Heathkit DX60B. I've seen a number of Heathkit DX60s and this is about the best one I've ever seen. I want you to take a look at the some picture a picture I took of the bottom and a picture I took of the top. And this looked like it came from the factory direct. It was recently serviced uh, by an organization in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Strangely enough, which is where Heathkit came from. And I talked to the fellow and he said it cost uh, the owner, which was not me at the time, $160 to have it serviced. So this is one of the better ones, if not the best one. Certainly the best one I've seen. So I'm going to show you that it works. I think that might be a good idea that you see that it works. Right now I have it set on a crystal on 80 meters and we peak up the drive tune here and you can see we got plenty of drive and I'm going to bring that down to 2 mils because we don't want to overdrive it. And we're going to use a dummy load and going to use a light bulb and we'll see how it works. So we're ready to tune it up. Um, we'll put this in the plate position and we have this loading turn to zero. I'm going to put this over to where it says 80 meters, kind of get it ready and we will put it on the air hopefully. Okay, now we dip the final, and there we go. You can see a power indication is up here, but this meter, this is very generous, so it's not accurate. Uh, but the light bulb isn't generous. And as you can see, it lights up uh, pretty, pretty far. Okay, let's see how it works on AM. And as you can see, I am uh, modulating it using a D104 microphone and then I thought it might be a good idea for you to see it on an oscilloscope. Okay, now you can see how it uh, modulates on an oscilloscope and it certainly seems to get 100% uh, uh, modulation and uh, that's always a good sign. Okay, now we're set up on 40 meters uh, crystal of 30, 69 6988. I know that's outside the 40 meter band, but that is the crystal I have. And we're not going to be heard in the world. Uh, but uh, there it is. I don't know if you can see that. And let's, we're going to peak the driver tune. And that's a little low, so we're going to bring up the, we'll bring that up a little bit. And let's bring this loading down to zero. And we'll put it in the CW position and see if we can load it up. And we need to dip the final. Uh, raise it. And dip it again. And raise it some more. And there we are. Uh, this meter is peaked at 100. But as I told you, it's uh, ridiculously generous on 40 meters. Okay, now we are on 20 meters. We're doubling that uh, crystal, which is just under the 40 meter band. And so it doubles a little bit low here. And we'll peak to final. Okay, that's still a little low. We're gonna bring that up there and we get our two mils of grid current. Throw that over the plate. I'm gonna reduce the loading here and throw that in the CW position and dip the final and bring it up and dip the final and bring it up and dip the final and bring it up okay so fine output on uh, 20 meters now we're going to try it on 15 meters and uh, once again, our output, our grid driver is a little low. 
and then we're going to peek it up over here and uh, we'll throw it in the plate position and now we will throw it into CW with, let's turn the loading down to zero and we throw it into the CW position we dip the final if I can find the dip there we are and we bring it back up and we dip it again and we bring it back up and we dip it again and we bring it back up and we dip it again and there we are on 15 meters. Okay, here we are on 10 meters. And uh, probably the only uh, issue that I have is it does seem to have low drive on 10 meters. When I talked to the person that repaired it, the professional, uh, he mentioned that uh, 10 meters does, does tend to have low drive. And uh, so we'll see how it is. You see the grid drive there is about uh, 2 mils. Uh, which isn't too bad uh, so that looks that looks okay and let's see if we can pick that up there we are so we got the uh, and it can let's uh, bring that down a little bit that's a little too high okay so we do have some we do have grid drive there you take a look here and we do have uh, plenty of grid drive on two meters so I'm gonna Reduce the loading. I'm going to see if we can get any output out of it on two, on 10 meters. Um, so I'll throw this over into the CW position, and we do have output, and we'll bring this up. And it doesn't seem to get a lot of output on ten, on two. You know, I dip it, and when I bring the loading up, it doesn't seem to increase it. And that could be a bad match with using a light bulb, uh, because I'm guessing the SWR is pretty high. Uh, yeah, the SWR is uh, over three to one, so it could be a match. It could be a match, a match problem there. So um, it has. It says here I'm getting 50 watts out, but I think that's probably wrong. It's probably closer to 25 watts. So uh, that's it on 10 meters. And I will reiterate. Uh, I'm going to ask a pretty good price for this. I'm going to post it at $200, which to some may be ridiculous, but I don't think you're going to find a Heathkit DX60B. I think it's in collectors and museum quality edition. That's my opinion. That may not be your opinion. You're, so you can decide whether you're interested in it or not. Uh, I really like the way it looks. I really like the way it looks and it seems to be perfect i don't know how somebody could keep it in this kind of condition for 55 years it seemed like it was wrapped in cellophane and someone took really good care of it and when i talked to the fellow that uh, did the service on it he didn't remember the uh, the particular uh one i tried to contact the previous owner and uh I, he didn't he I couldn't I'm not sure I even got his email email correct I have no idea why he sold it and because uh, I bought it at a fairly reasonable price but I'm in no rush to sell it if you're a connoisseur of DX60s and you'd like to buy it you're gonna pay for it so I think I will get my price it may take me a few months but I think I will get it you're always willing I'm, I will listen to an offer, and I've had some pretty ridiculous offers on ham equipment, and I get a good, as hams would say, a good high high uh, when they when they make those offers. But it's okay. You never know what, what's going to be accepted.